the Plant Daddies podcast. I'm on the floor of her bathroom next to a bin and here is a frozen pitta. Um, Matilda, thank you so much for joining me. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. I, I really thought we were past the Zoom phase, but mm. here we are. I've got so you- COVID. You've just recovered from COVID. I know, and I do feel slightly invincible now, which is, um, I don't know if it's a dangerous thing, but um, I'm walking around and I know that if someone coughs, I'm not going to freak out because I'm like, he. Have you always been in London? Yeah, um, I've always been a, a shepherd's bush gal, a bush nice. baby, as <laughs> some call us. So how have you been? I guess is the first question. It's been a pretty mental couple of years. Ah. <sighs> Yeah, it's been really weird. I mean, it's very strange to have started out as an artist in the pandemic, I guess. Um, I did like little gigs before. And then I guess all of all of like my big gigs have been like in between the COVID <laughs> spikes and kind of afterwards, I guess. Well, I guess we're in another one. So yeah, yeah. everything has been in between spikes, which is um, odd. Because I was... <laughs> Deep diving your Instagram, because that's what all good research, that's where all yeah. good research comes from is Instagram. Solid. The, the Staves tour from just before the pandemic, did that happen? <clears throat> it did. It was, I mean, it was actually, it was quite chaotic because I did, I did Arlo Parks and the Staves at the exact same time. Um, so when, and Arlo was doing like um, Paris and Germany, like uh, she, he, she did um, Berlin. And so I would fly to Berlin and then play in Manchester with the Staves. <laughs> and then the next day I'd go to Paris and then go to like Birmingham with the Staves. So that was exhausting. And I was just by myself because um, I didn't have a band and no one came with me. So I just did a lot of traveling. Mm-hmm. But um, but the Arlo one actually is the one that got cut slightly short. The whole Staves one finished. And then I was in Ireland and... I had to get the last flight out of Ireland to get home. Otherwise I would have been stuck there for months in months. a little, little hotel. God, so yeah, it I'm must not- have been interesting and also kind of quite disappointing to be on such a high and like have all that momentum. It's like, oh yeah, no. Nah. Yeah, I mean, it was suddenly when I like finished touring, I was like, Oh, I really miss it. Damn. I was like, I was finally getting over my stage fright because especially at the beginning, I always had to sit on a chair every time. Like at least my first 12 shows, I would sit down um, and I just looked a bit <laughs> pathetic. I <laughs> think you can work. Yeah, you can rock um, it. Yeah, but it's because it's my legs would wobble so much because I would be so nervous. And then, and then we took the chair away. Um, I'm so proud of you. I know my manager was god he was soaring that day um I have to wear baggy trousers still to be honest um yeah but it's it feels like because w- when did we meet it was the Holly show yeah I don't even know when that was I, was end I of summer? that was August August or end of July beginning of August I think and that was my first that was my first gig back Actually, well, this is what I was going to say. It's like, yeah. you've come from this Arlo and Staves high. We've had a pandemic. You've written an EP, which we'll come back to. And then you kind of just went straight back in. Like, I think those Holly shows must have been, must have been the first show that I went to. Like, and then you went on to Dodie. Like, you really kept the momentum going. It just feels like a little blip. It was. I mean, I, I signed a, a publishing deal and a label deal in the in a pandemic so I I just sat on my bed and signed both of them over zoom which was very anticlimactic but I think that's kind of what kept me going we had like the whole EP come out and so that was very homemade um and I think I've just um I'm really really lucky in terms of the people I have on my team I have a really amazing agent for for booking live gigs and um I mean he's one of like the the main points of my career I think he's you know he got me a holly gig and um she's amazing and then I went and saw all the rest of the other shows <laughs> I think I yeah. went to two so you've, you've beaten me but I, still, I thought I had a good run yeah I mean she she just gets better each time I see her to be honest um and it's also been 
it's mainly been crazy what because Arlo was doing really small well not like really small but she was doing for Arlo Parks they were small at the time when she did her tour and then she took off in a pandemic and released a whole album so it's been insane to watch people like her and people like Bieber Doobie just kind of become massive over a really short period of time and a pandemic which is crazy Crazy. there's been a lot of artists that have kind of come into their own um yourself included I think I mean this EP am I right in thinking it was written in the pandemic yeah I mean uh, two of them were the last two the because I wanted you to know or I actually get really confused on what which one's which but um the last one and the one before that both were in a pandemic I think um yeah and And we recorded all of them and stuff and we did we did the shoot like in between the spikes again um and then we we did a music video yeah like the music videos again would we had to just everyone had to do like lateral flow tests all the time yeah it was quite stressful to be honest but I really enjoyed it I quite like DIY stuff Mm. Um, I guess like going from touring and I guess maybe your first big tours into this pandemic how do you how do you adapt your I guess your artist profile and kind of how you navigate a career when you've kind of I don't really know what I'm saying but when when it's gone from like super exciting all this momentum and then like locked in your house like how do you adapt to that and how do you um, how do you approach it Um, I guess I'm a natural introvert I really enjoy being alone and in my room, <laughs> which Same. sounds really sad, but I, I do quite enjoy it. And um, I wouldn't say I was made for the spotlight. I don't, I'm, I really enjoy, I do, now I enjoy playing live, but I don't think I did at the beginning at all. I, I just got too, I got too anxious and nervous about it. And I was like, this isn't fun because I'm, I'm so worried all the time. <laughs> um, so I guess, I guess going back into lockdown is kind of just going back into my natural habitat and then I think I have to kind of hype myself up and and then I get excited I let myself get excited about gigs when when it comes closer to it but yeah I'm just I'm just a natural hibernator (laughs) I love it what was your like lockdown activity puzzles puzzles oh my god so many puzzles (laughs) don't know why I got back okay but yeah I went all granny style um, how many pieces uh, are we talking? I uh, only one thousand because our table oh, only. Um, yeah, uh, puzzles. Uh, I did write. I wrote a little bit, but then also I had no idea what to write about because I was in a pandemic, um, and nothing's happening. But I actually, luckily enough, I lived with my boyfriend at the time, uh, and he's a producer, and he bought all of his equipment over and stuck it in my room. So we kind of just played around with lots of beats. <laughs> Beat laboratory um, yeah so it was a little music household for a while um what? and it was really great weather so she yeah kind of sat annoyingly in London Garden um yeah what was the worst like lockdown fad you participated in mine was bleaching my hair oh I cut my hair which is probably worse because I can't probably cut worse. my hair yeah I mean I watch normal people as most as everyone did and she has a the main character has a fringe and I was so tempted to like go full on fringe but I just don't know if I could rock it um but I gave myself like little curtain bang bits can you see them but I didn't probably commit to it so I have just like little hairs that are there um and then I went to a shoot after the pandemic and um it was for Notion and this guy was doing I was having my makeup and hair done and I was like really embarrassed I was like oh like I cut my hair, I cut my hair like a little bit and he just went he looked at this tiny little strand of short badly cut hair in the middle of my fringe or face or whatever and he was just like oh honey no oh no <laughs> so I had a similar thing <laughs> I went through this period of, I basically like put all my hair up it's short now so it's fine but I put all my hair up and then I just shave around the sides and that was my haircuts for like 18 months but then you get to a point where it's so bad yeah that that you can't go to a barber because it's so bad but you need to go to a barber because it's so bad and then yeah biting the bullet was bad would you be tempted to just do a whole buzz the buzz of the way I would 
I feel like I, I, I get used to the weight of it and like the movement of it. And if I just cut it all off, then I'd find myself like getting whiplash because I'm used to having like hair. Yeah. And also, I don't know. Like, fun to play with, I guess. I did um, shave all my hair off once I, when I was really young and I just discovered I've got a weirdly shaped head. Oh. So. Well, like at the back, the front looks I'm I don't fine. know. I think it's just if I think it's just quite a narrow head. I have a very small head. I look a bit like a Playmobil character. If Do you reckon? Yeah. It, That's I, not what I first thought when I saw you, but Oh, thank you. <laughs> Is that a compliment? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would take that because I used to have really long hair. I used to have hair down to my butt. Mm. Um and it uh the damn no it wasn't good i looked a bit like hagrid um it was just so puffy and my hair just likes to turn into a puff ball when it's heat like when it's humidity oh my god it's not manageable <laughs> no we've gone very off topic but i oh, like yeah, it very. so hang on so the worst lockdown fad was your bangs yeah probably i mean nice. the worst part of lockdown was definitely december in 2020 in 2020 yeah december mm. 20 like this time last year i hated it yeah there was nothing good it was so grim i have like a weird fondness for the drinking in parks era i actually really enjoyed it yeah i would like and i'd we- never I- go and sit in a park and drink <laughs> Yeah, we had like, we made little picnics and um, we would go to Regent's Park because my friend would live on the other side of London with her boyfriend at the time. And we would all cycle and meet the like the park in between was Regent's Park and we would go and sit there. And it was really, it was super pretty. And I miss cycling as well without there being any cars. Yeah. I'm terrified to cycle now. I definitely will get hit. I wanted to talk about the EP as well. So, the Sonda. Sonda. I had to Google the word Sonda and it's got such a beautiful meaning. So my, I guess, two part question, A, could you tell us what it means? Because I feel like you'll explain it better. And B, how did you kind of stumble across it? Why is that what you decided to name the EP? I I don't really know how I came across the word. I might be that, you know, when you let your laptop screen just go to sleep, some people have a setting where like words come across. And I think I had a session with someone and there were just hella words were going like across the screen and and then it stopped on Sonder. And I was like, that's a lovely word. What does that mean? Um, and the definition for it is, I'm pretty sure it's German. And it means the sudden realization that each passerby has a life as individual and complex as your own, which in normal words is um, like, if you're sitting in a coffee shop and you look out at the street and all these people that pass, they have a childhood, they have a whole family, they have a job, like they've got a whole future ahead of them. They have a life as big as your own life. Sorry, there's just like a mad crow outside my window. Um, but I I really like that concept. And I think, I think it tied in really nicely with everyone being in a pandemic because you know people like me who have a house you know I lived with my family and my family are I get along with them luckily and they're good people and we were able to be furloughed and stuff and so I just we didn't have any worries so all we would worry about is other people and you finally had like a good amount of time to think about the world and people in very different situations so I think I kind of wanted to call it Sondra as like a reminder to think about other people's situations really yeah and so did that come at like the end of the process was the EP done and you needed a title or uh no I actually weirdly I really I name stuff before I start a project (laughs) nice so did it kind Um, of feed into the writing of it a little yeah I think a lot a lot of the songs basically all of them I think were written for other people like for my friends who were going through a hard time or um like stories I had heard of what other people were doing so none of them were I think from first-hand experiences really 
Um, and I also really like to kind of live through other people's ideas and the way they view things because there's only so much I can write about myself before it gets <laughs> repetitive and boring. <laughs> I'm sure it wouldn't be repetitive and boring. Um, I've just noted, well, I haven't just noticed, but the wall behind you yeah. feels like a very memory-led wall. <laughs> Jesus Christ. There's a lot of pictures. Um, I really like I really like photography. So I mean, it's have, not photography, but I like pictures. This may be a really difficult question, but do you have a single favorite photo on that wall? Um, the one that my eye is drawn to the hmm. most is this one. <laughs> this is me 17 at my friend Maya's house and she made Cosmopolitans and I got very very drunk and I'm on the floor of her bathroom next to a bin and here is a frozen pitta that she gave me um to soak up that alcohol and yeah I find it very entertaining to be honest she didn't want to chuck it in the microwave no she was also drunk so there was there was no cooking involved it was frozen pitta and yeah and a bin and a bin <laughs> but I always when I have like meetings with people who are maybe slightly more serious I tend to sit in front of it just in case they can make out what it is I don't but think most... I would have maybe no, I, I don't know no well now I've told you what it is I think. exactly I've um, just bought a, a um... like sorry I missed that oh no sorry like most of them are old pictures I think yeah I just bought myself a little like point and shoot um film camera and it's like, it's like, it, it could be a disposable, like it's that kind of level of control. It's literally, there's no settings apart from like flash. Um, and I love it. And it's hot pink. And I got baby queen to sign it. And then I- What are your, your favourite kind of things to take pictures of? I don't know. I like, cause it's so kind of light and plasticky and shit. I literally just chuck it in my bag or my pocket. Um, the first picture I took on it was my housemate. So like on the other side, of this wall is um my housemate's studio and I put the film in this camera and I went and I knocked on the door and he's sat in a dressing gown with a guitar on his lap and I picked up the camera and he went wait 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 and he picked up a bottle of ketchup and I thought he was gonna like pretend to squirt it in his mouth and I went one two three and he squirted ketchup in his mouth which that's is disgusting commitment. yeah that's I know you can do that <laughs> um so that's the first picture I think it's about like like you take so many pictures on an iPhone. Yeah. And then you might have like 10 pictures of the same thing to try and get the best one. And then because there's an abundance of them there, they just mean nothing. And I think- yeah. the I mean, I think a really, I, um, <laughs> not that I'm getting married anytime soon, as single as I am, um, <laughs> but um, I saw someone do a wedding hack where <clears throat> there's no phones allowed. So you can't, take pictures on your phone and they just like put a disposable on each table and everyone just takes disposables for the evening and so you have like loads and loads of pictures that no one has like seen before like set up and so everyone is like very in the moment on that day and I think that's I mean I think that's how people should do life really but um mm. I, I think yeah I think there's something about like you've got to commit to it you've really got to want to take a picture of it like yeah yeah most of the pictures on my phone are shit so I just don't I don't bother trying to find the good ones but it's that I've like gone that's cool I'm gonna take a picture of that yeah um, I think yeah it's really nice I've got like um I've got a little film camera which I'm learning how to use better but um I, I do enjoy a, a phone camera just because I I quite like I really like zooming heavily into things I like a close-up thing yeah um uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not completely not. I still take loads of pictures on my phone, but there's something about that that's just more permanent. Yeah. Um, we've gone way off topic. Yeah, sorry. Um, I no, not at all. So something I wanted to, to ask you about is, I don't really know how to set it up, but from what I've, like, I'm not an artist, so I'm not going to pretend to be an expert on any of this, but the artists I've spoken to about kind of the early days and kind of stepping into music it gets to a point where you've got to kind of take the leap and commit and 
be an artist whereas I guess before that maybe you're kind of like balancing it alongside other stuff like I'm interested to know what that balance looks like what was that journey like for you and when did you take the leap into like being Matilda Mann you know um I think again like I think because of the whole pandemic I have a very well maybe not unique for my age group but um in terms of just storyline I left school I went to the Brit school which is a like um, an arts kind of school I went there for two years um and everyone wasn't going to uni I think like three people in my year group went to a uni um and I didn't get into goldsmiths which is the only uni I wanted to go to um and I didn't get in which kind of thank god because I'm pretty sure I would have dropped out um and the education system just doesn't really work for me um (laughs) so I left school and then I really kind of enjoyed not being in school I really liked being able to kind of do what I wanted really but um I was like I don't actually have a plan I have no idea what I'm doing so I was like I'll give myself a year and I'll work and like raise money and I'll um just do music on the side I guess and then if it if there like seems like no hope then I'll reapply to a uni or something um and I worked in a pub (laughs) for maybe seven months and I did a lot of hours a week and I just didn't really have time to do music um but I guess over those seven months eventually I've kind of accumulated about four songs and my friend Giacomo who's actually that person there (laughs) um my friend Jack from school he had like his little studio in his room at his house and he helped me record these four songs and I just put them on SoundCloud because YOLO um <laughs> and that's how you that's, gotta do it yeah it's Sam Cloud, isn't it um uh and then uh, and my manager kind of found me from that and um yeah and and then I think I just he he started to put me into sessions I was 18 at this point I think um and then and then I hated working at a pub and so I quit and I started working at a, a garden center which I really Amazing. like love garden centers um and everyone there is just a very wholesome person and um people would come in and just be like oh my god I learned a lot about plants and now I have loads um but that was in the day as well which made a big difference I could then go and start doing kind of little stand-up like kind of busking things in the evening with some of my friends um and that kind of got me used to performing and stuff and then I have no idea I suddenly my first gig ever was to support Biba Doobie at her first ever gig which was a bit wild it's a good first gig not many (laughs) people can say that oh no I was very surprised I was like what the hell um so that that's kind of how extreme it went from Uh, playing nothing to then doing that to be fair it was at St Pancras Old Church which is a great venue it's Mm. it's like cute and it's very nice acoustic and she just did an acoustic set her and Oscar Lang just did some guitars and stuff um but that was really fun and um I don't know I started to just write a lot more because I was working with other people finally and um yeah I started to be a little less folk because I suddenly had loads of other instruments at my hand so I think that's kind of how I did it and then uh, I was working in a garden center and then we went into a pandemic so I got furloughed for a bit but um during that time I then I signed those deals which is probably just the handiest thing really because I was just at home (laughs) and now here we are and now here we are um amazing so what's coming up what's what does 2022 look like 2022 does look really really exciting I've never been so excited for a year but then I said that about 21 and yeah um Mm. I mean it has been great but again lots of lots of little lockdowns but I think we will I think we'll nip this one in the bud and I think come mid-February we'll be on the right track for like a good summer at least um but I have I have so many new songs I have a stupid amount um and I think they're all going to come out in 2022 in a large format of some sort um (laughs) uh yeah and they're a lot they're quite different in terms of I think they're a bit more mature sounding um and kind of rocky-ish 
some of them are a bit punk nice uh with my very <laughs> like baby child folk voice <laughs> so it's a it's an interesting combination but well um, that can work look at look at baby doobie yeah it's I a mean, cool sound I think it's also yeah it's like a kind of Olivia Rodrigo kind of um wet leg are amazing I love them and I think I've recently been really inspired by them uh yeah and I've I've also got to play with a band for the first time which is super fun uh and we're going to be doing a lot more festivals and we've got our first headline tour which is sick is that announced or is that top secret oh no it's announced it's out in the big bad world you can go and buy tickets and everything sick are you looking forward to it? <laughs> yes. I mean, hopefully it will go through. It will. Manifesting. I've got, yeah, uh, I've got faith. I've got faith, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited about that and all of the festivals in summer. I'm going to play at Glastonbury. Sick. I've never been, which is I've never been. Prime. I'll put you in my suitcase. And Amazing. I kind of feel like with Glastonbury, like everyone, everyone gets so worked up about like, like what is it like ticket lotteries and all that kind of stuff and I just think if I never try to go to Glastonbury then I can never be disappointed you know what I mean <laughs> like everyone gets so emotionally invested and I'm just like that that can be your thing man it's fine I think I think those people probably went once loved it became addicted mm. to it, and they're like I must find a way to go again um so they haven't thought of sneaking into someone's suitcase, I bet. So no. we can. No one's ever thought of that. Genius. Now I'm going to get super searched when I get there. It's yeah. fine. We won't tell anyone. <laughs> Matilda, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. It's been it. super fun. Good entertainment for you and in, in your little quarantining. Oh, yeah. And now I'm just going to go back to binge watching New Girl for the rest of the three days or whatever. That's a great thing to binge watch, though. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Sick. Thank you so much. Oh, uh, thanks so much, Tony. Hope you have a good time. Thanks. Little, 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 little. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Plant Daddies podcast. 